हेलो एवरीवन आई एम दीपक धुंगड़ी फ्रॉम उड़ान क्लास टेन रैपिड रिविजन क्लास दिस इज़ अ पार्ट टू ऑफ दिस लेक्चर दैट इज इलेक्ट्रिसिटी इन अवर प्रीवियस लेक्चर वी हैव डिस्कसड अबाउट व्हाट इज करेंट व्हाट इज पोटेंशियल डिफरेंस दैट इज वोल्टेज एंड द सिंबॉल्स इंडिकेटिंग द सर्क्यूट सिम्बॉल्स नाउ वील बिगिन दिस लेक्चर विद द ओम्स लॉ सो वॉट इज ओम्स लॉ सी ओम्स इज एन साइंटिस्ट हु हैज derived this law he has derived a, a difference or you, you can say that he can he have related a uh, terms that is voltage and uh, current he has given a proper relation between them how voltage and current they vary themselves so at constant temperature see at constant temperature the current flowing through a conductor is directly proportional to the potential difference that is voltage across it is that means see voltage and current they are directly proportional to each other if you increase the current then definitely the potential difference will increase or if you increase the potential difference then the, there is a increase in the current remember it is at the constant temperature that means if you are living in the other countries then you may get slightly different variations in your values so at the particular temperature with the constant temperature the current flowing through a conductor is directly proportional to the potential difference across its conductor so this defines then will move okay yes so then what is the mathematical form of this uh, ohms law see in the ohms law you can see the voltage and the resistance are directly proportional to voltage is directly proportional to the resistance here c v is equal to r into i here r indicates the resistance see where v is the potential difference it is in volts i is current in amperes and resistance is defined in terms of ohms okay then what is the resistance see resistance is defined as simply the opposition opposition means it resist it resist means it will not allow the electrons to move forward so resistance means to resist to stop so it will stop the electrons which are flowing in the conductor so resistance is nothing but a property of a conductor to resist or to oppose the flow of charges here charges means the flow of electrons flowing through it then what is again you can define as resistance in terms of this that is uh, if i take i here so v by r, i is equal to r so resistance can be defined as the ratio of potential difference to the current yes then you can see resistance as i told in previous that is the potential difference divided by current will give me the resistance you can see in this diagram the very beautiful depiction is given that is the current wants to move and voltage is making it to move but ohm here resistance is stopping the current to flow so resistance and current are inversely proportional if i increase more resistance then the current will decrease if i increase more current then resistance will similarly if i increase volt more voltage then there will be more resistance so what will happen what happens is this should be always a constant for particular material see here volt voltage is making the current to flow forward but resistance is not allowing it yes then what causes this resistance see you can see in this uh, diagram here what is happening when there is no potential difference when there is no battery here remember the potential difference or the voltage source are nothing but the our electrical mains cell batteries they are the voltage sources okay see when there is no potential difference is applied that means when there is no battery is applied then the electrons present or the charges present in them they move randomly but when you see when the potential difference is allied they move from positive to negative you can see the direction here the electrons will move move from negative to positive see the dotted one are electrons and the positively charged particles are present see they are moving from negative to positive and current will flow from positive to negative see when the free electrons drift um, inside the conductor they frequently collide that means they they will collide or they, uh, with each other with its positive ions or the atoms the motion of the electrons is opposed during this collision then what is the si unit of this resistance see the si unit of resistance is ohm 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 and it is denoted by a symbol that is ohm 
okay then what is how will you define ohm see you remember again the formula it is r is equal to v by i if i take r is equal to 1 ohm and v is equal to 1 volt and the current uh, current uh, i is equal to 1 amps so if the potential difference across the two ends of a conductor so how you can remember this 1 ohm is defined as 1 volt divided by 1 ampere if the potential difference across the ends of a conductor is 1 volt uh, and the current flowing through it is 1 ampere then the resistance is given as 1 ohm then how will you define the uh, relation between the resistance and current see uh, you can directly see here resistance and current are inversely proportional ohm and ampere so the current through the register is inversely proportional that means they if one increases the other will decrease then why tungsten is used almost exclusively for the filament of electric lamps you have seen the electric lamps and you see the tungsten is the most widely used material in cfl and in uh, incandescent bulbs nowadays we are using led bulbs so wh why it is used because the melting and the the melting point and the resistivity of tungstens are very high that means it will not melt easily even if there is a very uh, very much heat it does not burn easily readily at a high temperature so the electric lamps glow at very high temperature and this metal will not melt also hence tungsten is mainly used as a heating element of electric bulbs then what is rheostat see rheostat is nothing but the variable resistance this symbol already we have discussed that is nothing but this this is the resistance if i put some arrow mark here then it will indicate the uh, variable register that is nothing but rheostat you can see the uh, symbol it is used in the laboratories in order to increase or decrease the resistance see a device which is used to change the magnitude of current that means if i increase this uh, resistance then current will decrease if i decrease this current will increase so in order to increase or decrease the magnitude of the current by changing the length of the resistance wire in inserted into the circuit it is called as a variable resistance or it is also called as a rheostat then what is the difference between resistance and register see resistance is a property and register is a material remember it is the product or it is something you can hold in your hand but resistance is a property which opposes the flow of the current or the electrons register is a material which has some resistance in it okay then the activity we'll discuss now see here the length uh, what is the effect of the length on the resistance we'll discuss see what is happening here the uh, nichroma wire is taken here for one two three and here they have changed the length in second case they have made it double in third case they have made thicker in fourth they have made thinner so when the length of the wire is doubled you see when the length of the wire is doubled the ammeter reading decreases to one half of its initial value that means they are inversely proportional so resistance increases with increase in length and when we use a thicker wire that means when we increase the area then the same material and the for the same length the current of the circuit increases that means the resistance is decreased so and when we use copper wire of the similar dimensions in place of nichrome wire the current in the circuit decreases that means the nichrome itself has the property to allow more uh, current less current and copper is a more widely used uh, conductor see then what are the factors on which the uh, resistance of a conductor depends see you can just remember uh, these factors that is formula r is equal to rho l by a this formula you will make you to understand the importance of this so we'll discuss one by one now see the resistance of a conductor depends upon its length first if length increases the resistance will increase if on its area of cross section if area of cross section increases resistance will decrease nature of material if you take the good conductors like silver is the most good conductor and temperature if they increases the temperature the resistance will also increase so the first one is resistance of a conductor depends on the length resistance of a conductor directly proportional the see the symbol this alpha indicates the directly proportional that means if resistance is increased the length if the length is increased resistance is also increased and the resistance is inversely proportional to the area that means if i increase the area then the definitely the resistance will decrease 
and see resistance of a material is also depends upon resistance of a conductor is also depends upon the material of which it is made see the resistance of a copper is much less than that of nichrome where that means nichrome has less resistance uh, more resistance and copper has less resistance that means copper allows the more electrons or the more current to pass through it yes then what is resistivity see resistivity is defined as the resistance see resistivity is defined as the resistance offered by cube of material of 1 meter current flowing perpendicular to its opposite faces then what is si unit of resistivity see res resistivity is the property of a material to oppose the flow of a current the simple definition what you can remember is resistivity is a property of the given material which allow which does not allow the electricity to flow or it is a property of material to oppose the flow of electrons or the property which offers resistance is itself we call it as a resistivity so si unit of resistivity is ohm meter you see the symbol here ohm and meter together we call it as ohm meter then we shall study the difference between resistance and resistivity see resistance is the already we have discussed it is the opposition to the flow of uh, the uh, current in the conductor electrical resistivity remains constant at a particular temperature for particular material then classification of solids on the basis of resistivity see on the basis of resistivity value solids can be classified into conductors which allows the current to pass insulators which does not semiconductors are in between conductors and insulators see conductors are nothing but the metals and their alloys who are having the very low resistivity that means if they are having less resistance then they can allow the more current to pass through it in the range you can see very less that is 10 raised to minus 8 ohm meter to 10 raised to minus 6 ohm meter they are very good conductors of electricity they offer very low resistance to the flow of current example copper and aluminum have the lowest resistivity the lowest to lowest is the silver and insulators are the substances which have large resistivity that means they does not allow the electrons to pass more than 10 raised to 4 ohm meter insulators like glass and rubber have high resistivities in the range of 10 raised to 12 to 10 raised to 17 then some semiconductors are the the substances which whose resistivity lies in between that of conductors and insulators for example you, uh, you can see germanium and silicon and 10 raised to minus 6 to 10 raised to minus 4 ohm meter then a resist a wire of resistivity rho is stretched to three times its length see if the resistivity is increased three times mm, uh, the of its original length what will be its new resistivity see resistivity will remain same that means irrespective of changes in the length that means resistivity remains unchanged as it does not depend upon the length yes it depends only on the nature of material of the wire why do we use uh, copper and uh, aluminum wires for transmission of <coughs> electric current see copper and aluminum have very really low resistivity or they are having high conductivity that means they conduct more charges or they resist less then resistivity you see silver has the lowest resistivity that means it allows the maximum current is resistivity is 1.60 into 10 raised to minus 8 ohm meter the resistivity of an alloy is generally higher than that of the pure metals which form which forms the alloy the resistivity of the alloy is like a const, uh, like constant ton is again a material that does not change with its temperature so it remains constant why are coils of electric toaster you have seen this electric toaster or some geyser sand uh, hall in previously to heat the temperature uh, heating coils they will use this and uh, iron um, and electric ions made up of an alloy rather than the pure metal see the coils of electric toaster and electric iron are made up of alloys because alloys have higher resistivity they allow it does not allow more current to pass than that of their constituent metals alloys do not oxidize or they burn easily readily at their high temperatures need for combination of resistance in an electric circuit see in order to obtain a desired values of the current in an electric circuit so in order to obtain a high resistance or in order in like in heating uh, applications and in order to uh, get the very low current or a low resistivity like in electrical appliance which we use in our home for lighting so um, resistance can be combined into three types the most important ones are series and parallel this mixed one is a combination of both series and parallel so what is resistance in series see if the three resistors are connected 
in a straight line that is start of one is the end of one is the start of other that we call it as resistance in series the current has a single path of its flow hence the same current passes through and in series you remember the current will remain same okay then uh, the the potential difference across the entire circuit is equal to the sum that means what voltage is sum of individual voltages now you can see this ohms law diagram here the cells are connected so battery you can say because combination of cells it is then this is a is a ammeter r1 r2 r3 are the resistors with the resistances r1 r2 and r3 and remember this x and y is the voltage source connected between in parallel and ammeter is connected in series there is a key current always flow from positive to negative i remember the arrow marks here so as a current will remain same everywhere in the series and this uh, voltage is nothing but the sum of the voltage so voltage through r1 v1 v2 and v3 then resistance in parallel what will happen resistance in parallel here see in the parallel voltage will remain same this is a reverse case even in voltage remain same and current will change here the current will change is nothing but the current the current in the resistor is inverse the sorry is inverse the proportional to its resistance the sum of the resistances that is through each resistor r1 r2 and r3 in the separate branches of the parallel circuit is equal to the current i drawn from the source so the current here i can take it as i is equal to i1 plus i2 plus i3 this is a diagram for mm, the parallel connection see the voltage again between a and b is connected uh, a is connected in a series you can connect a anywhere okay then r1 r2 and r3 the reciprocals of equivalent resistance see rp is equivalent resistance total resistance you can see that is nothing but 1 upon r1 plus 1 upon r2 plus 1 upon r3 see advantages of connecting the electrical circuits in parallel so what is the advantage you can connect these resistors in parallel see there is no division of voltage among the appliances when connected in parallel that means the voltage will remain same if the, our home appliances will have the voltage of 220 volt to 230 maximum so each and every electrical appliances what you can connect in between they will get the same voltage then the potential difference across each appliance so that means again same the voltage they are talking that is uh, supplied voltage is same the total effective resistance of the circuit can be reduced by connecting electrical appliances in parallel so the resistance offer is very less in parallel connection so why do we use parallel circuit again in domestic wiring see a parallel circuit divides the current that means uh, it uh, distributes the only the current which is suitable for it that is a parallel circuit divides the current through the electrical appliances the total resistance in parallel circuit is decreased this is helpful for particular gadgets or some electrical appliances to operate properly yes then this is the wiring parallel wiring yes the arrangement you can see here there is a main this red color indicates here there is no red color but the live wire will be in red color connected to main switch then this is your electricity meter then there are main switches this is main fuse and here you can see they are connected in parallel three pin switches are connected earth wire for heavy appliances then earth connection will be given so then what are the disadvantages of connecting the electrical uh, devices in series they are telling see as i told in series uh, the current will remain same some applications would not be ge getting uh, the same current and they will get damaged so in order to uh, protect the devices which low, needs very low current then we should always connect in parallel only yes then what are the you can see these are connected in series all will grow but if they are taking the same current here if you connect multiple then everything will uh, every bulb will not glow then the next topic we'll discuss is what is the heating effect of electric current see if you in if you use your mobile for long time you connect it to the electricity or simply you see your mobile phones get heated up that means that is offering more resistance if you offer more resistance to some uh, material then uh, through electricity then the obviously there is a heating effect will takes place that is a simple principle behind it that is heating effect of electric current is through more of the 
resistance uh, itself see the effect of electric current due to which heat is produced in a wire when the current is passed through is, is nothing but the heating effect of current all it is also called as joules heating or joules law of heating else then what is joules law of heating you should remember simply the formula that is uh, h is equal to i square rt it is should be h or w work or heat heat energy it is so h is equal to i square rt is a better formula see what is happening here see what is joules law of heating if i write instead of wh here i square rt is a joules law of heating so it is that it is directly the heat is directly proportional to the square of the current the heat energy is directly proportional to the resistance and heat energy is directly proportional to the temperature see the amount of heat produced in the conductor is directly proportional to the square it is s q u e r e of the current that is h is directly proportional to i square h is directly proportional to the resistance and h is directly proportional to the time same thing h is equal to i square rt is the formula only remember formula and try to depict yourself then why does the cord of electric heater not glow while the heating elements does see the heating element of an electric heater is a resistor yes you obviously the resistor will uh, heat the amount of heat produced by it is proportional to its resistance the resistance of the element of electric heater is very high as the current flows through the heating element you you see the as the current flows through the heating element it becomes so hot that it glows red sometimes it glows red also and that shows uh, it is having more resistance so on the other hand the resistance of the cord the other end is low it does not become red when current flows through it yes then the next topic is power after heating power this might be the last one see electric power of the electric appliances is the rate at which it consumes electrical energy so p uh, h by t you can do p is equal to h by t so when simply divide the heat by time you get the power yes it is the rate at which the work is done so rate of doing work or heat energy in maintaining the electrical current in that electric circuit so as you know power is nothing but rate of work done w by t and w is equal to vit that is voltage into current into time tt i just cancel it to p is equal to v into i so you can write in different forms that is p is equal to vi is one form p then you know according to ohms law v is equal to i into r so i square r or simply you can write i is equal to v square p is equal to v square by r there are three forms you can express then what is si unit of electric power see the si unit of electric power is watt one watt is the power consumed by a device that carries one ampere of current remember so you can write p is equal to v into i i write v is 1 volt and i is 1 ampere so power one power or one watt is defined has one ampere of current when operated to a potential difference of 1 volt then what is watt hour see watt hour is that is not same thing power into time p into the heat energy it is it is defined has the electrical energy consumed by an electrical appliances of 1 watt in 1 hour so one watt of power it is consumed in one hour we call it as watt hour then what is the commercial unit of electrical energy you see in our home the electric meter is giving you the units 1 2 3 based on that electricity bill is generated that each unit the uh, is one unit is nothing but kilowatt hour yes so kilowatt hour is nothing but the commercial unit of the electrical energy then kilowatt hour can be expressed in terms of uh, joules that is a kilowatt hour is the energy supplied in one hour to electrical appliances whose power is 1 kilowatt or 1000 watt so 1 kilowatt hour is given as 1 kilowatt into 1 hour so i can write 1 kilo in terms of 1000 watt and 1 hour is 3600 seconds so i can just simply write 3.6 into 10 to the power of 6 watt second this watt second is nothing but the joule so 1 kilowatt hour is nothing but 1 3.6 10 to the power of 6 joules this completes the explanation let us discuss at least two three problems which are there in your exercise so the first thing what they have given here is a piece of wire resistance r is cut into five equal parts so if i take a wire of length then i can cut it into five equal parts then resistance will become 1 1 by 5 that means resistance will become 1 by 5 this r again connected in parallel so parallel is 1 upon r1 so i will write r by 5 so the 5 will go up 5 by r 5 by r so it will become 25 
ट्वेंटी फाइव बाई आर सो वन अपॉन आर डैश इज इक्वल टू ट्वेंटी फाइव बाई आर सो आर बाय आर डैश इज इक्वल टू ट्वेंटी फाइव सो द रेशो ऑफ द ओरिजिनल रजिस्टेंस टू द चेंज इन रजिस्टेंस वेन इट इज डिवाइड इन टू हाफ इज ट्वेंटी फाइव सो दिस इज ऑप्शन डी देन विच ऑफ द फॉलोइंग टर्म्स डज नॉट रिप्रेजेंट द इलेक्ट्रिक पावर इन अ सर्क्यूट सी आई स्क्वेयर आर टी आई आर स्क्वेयर सी आई स्क्वेयर आर टी इज द फॉर्म देन वी आई टी वी स्क्वेयर आर ओनली ऑप्शन बी इज रॉन्ग इयर येस देन एंड इलेक्ट्रिक बल्ब इज रेटेड टू ट्वेंटी वोल्ट सी वॉट दे हैव गिवन यर वोल्टेज वी एंड हंड्रेड वैट इट इज पावर वेन इट इज ऑपरेटेड ऑन हंड्रेड एंड टेन वोल्ट then the power consumed will be see we know already resistance will remain same for uh, the particular material so resistance will be v square by p because they are connected in parallel wherein voltage remains the same where p is equal to 100 v i will get the r here r is equal to 220 by 100 square by 100 i got 484 ohm again i want to calculate the power when the voltage is 110 so 110 the whole square divided by 484 Will give me twenty five watt. Therefore, the power consumed will be twenty five watt here. So the answer will be twenty five watt. So this completes our uh, discussion on the topic that is the electricity. If you like this, please share, subscribe, and uh, like the video. Yes, thank you so much for watching. Thank you.